Hi you guys, uh, hello and welcome. It's finally raining here. This is the first day we've had any rain at all for a long time. And for that reason, I just really wanted to make a video uh, showing how certain plants respond to drought. Because I think it's just a really interesting thing. So, as you know, some plants are more drought tolerant than other plants. Uh, they all have different moisture needs. Some of them are more succulent than others. Uh, which basically means that they have a better water storing capacity. So what this means is that they are less susceptible to drought. So I just wanted to show you how a few different plants behave. Um, pardon me if there's a lot of traffic going by. We're having a really high traffic day on the avenue just because of construction. Um, yeah, so first I just really wanted to show you guys blanket flower. This is a plant that desiccates all the way down to the bottom and regenerates through little rosettes. Uh, this particular method of self-preservation is very common among many perennial plants, uh, especially summer blooming perennial plants. Uh, if they suffer any drought after blooming, don't be alarmed if they start dying right back to the ground. If you dig slightly below the basal plate of the plant, which is basically where the roots emerge and the shoots emerge in the early spring, if you see a little bit of green or white fleshy roots there, it's perfectly alive and it'll come back for you. So now another thing that I really wanted to show you guys, this is Sambucus racemosa. So this over here is the black lace elderberry. Uh, this particular plant here goes dormant. So when this plant here doesn't get any water for a long prolonged period of time, it'll actually lose all of its foliage. It'll become somewhat desiccated and it'll fall down and it'll um, self mulch itself. So you know that this plant is not dead and it's actually dormant. If you can see a little um, cambium layer below the bark surface, that's a nice lime green color, sometimes dark green. This basically means that it has regenerative tissue and that part of the plant is salvageable. Uh, it's simply a self-defense mechanism of the plant when it doesn't have enough resources in the respects of water, uh, it just loses all of its foliage. It's called foliar abortion. So what this means is that the plant is basically trying to conserve as much water as it possibly can by only preserving its internal vascular tissues. So don't be alarmed if your plants lose all of their foliage. And this is just simply a response to a lack of moisture. Now another thing I wanted to say is dieback. So some plants will naturally produce a little bit of a abscisic acid, which basically cuts off some of the limbs and saves the rest of the plant that's been depleted of moisture. So here I have a heme plant and I just really wanted to show you how this one reacts. As you can see, some of the limbs are really green and uh, lush and healthy. However, some of them have completely died back. So this here is uh, very natural for lots of succulent plants, lots of temperate plants as well that can survive a little bit of drought abuse, but not too much. So essentially what's happening is this one is a stress response and some parts of the plant have just succumbed to the infection of a lack of moisture and have essentially fallen off. So that can be a little bit of a problem if you have like larger trees that abort their branches and stuff because then they can fall on people and then that poses as a safety hazard. So another thing that I wanted to mention about water stress in plants is differences in the size of the anatomy of the plant. So here I have a Dawn Redwood I don't know if you can see the mature size of the um, needle panels here, but this is the same species. This one here has had a little bit of water stress, simply because the composition of the soil is slightly different. And I don't know if you can see the difference, but it's somewhat stunted that there's another sign of water stress in plants. Now another thing I wanted to say about water stress in plants is some species will actually produce a whole lot of fruit. This is another self-defense mechanism as the plant is trying to reproduce quickly uh, so that it can ensure it has future generations. So that there is seen in a lot of legumes, you'll see a lot of bean pods being produced on your beans at this part of the season, September, October, as usually there's a little bit of late summer drought, especially where I live. Another thing I will say is a lot of plants will actually reflex their leaves downwards. Sorry, I got a little water on the lens. And that just looks like this. So this here is also lack of water stress. So I'll try to make a video and show you guys if I have enough time. Uh, I got more water on my lens. 
uh, later on and show you how these plants responded to getting their water back. And we'll see how that goes, but it's just really interesting to see how the vascular systems of different plants respond to lack of water. So now I'm getting completely wet, but I think I'm going to stay here a little bit. It's been very smoky here for the last while. And now that we're finally getting a little bit of rain, I feel like I can finally breathe again. Really beautiful feeling. So another thing I really wanted to talk about, here I have Malabar spinach. Uh, it's showing another sign of water stress. So this one here has what's called an ankle, which is basically at the base of the plant, it's completely um, drooped over, it's wilting. This is also because of water stress. Um, if you see shot holes and stuff, that's a completely different problem I'll get into in another video. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a lovely day. I'll try to be more consistent with my video posting. And for now, I just really want to enjoy this rain. It's just beautiful. And so yeah, to recap, plants respond in many different ways to drought and water stress. And most of the time they're quite salvageable. So what's important is to know what species of plant you are growing and know how it behaves to a lack of water. Some of them go dormant, some of them will die back, some of them will lose some of their foliage, and some of them will automatically start to reproduce. So I hope this helps you guys in your gardening efforts. I hope that you guys uh, can become more familiar with how plants respond to uh, a lack of moisture and a sudden upbringing of moisture as well. And I hope you guys have a lovely day. Okay, stay blessed you guys. I'll try to post more often and thank you. Uh, I can't believe I already have over 100 subscribers. Thank you so much you guys. I love you so much and just stay blessed.